Hey, uh, I wanted to quickly go over how to create a fishnet grid from um, a set of points and how to aggregate how many points there are in this grid. So um, this plot right here is what we're going to try to end up making. And a fishnet grid is uh, essentially the idea you, you lay a grid over a set of geometry, whether it's uh, polygons or points, in this case it's points, and you kind of create grids of equal or squares or hexagons of equal size and you lay over those uh, hexagons or polygons or hexagons or squares over your existing map um, and that kind of is a fishnet because it kind of looks like a fishnet right so um the the goal is to use uh this or to create this, this plot here so i'm going to go over here and steal some of my code from earlier there's this um rep repository for crime mapping uh, i'll put it in the description below and it has some data included in the GitHub repository. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load in the uh, SF package and dplyr and actually ggplot2 for later on. So the first thing to do is we're going to use the read r read csv function to read in this csv file. We're going to call it shootings. So if you look at it, it's got what, five columns here. It's the incident ID, when it occurred, whether it was a murder, and the longitude and latitude. So right now, this isn't uh, an SF object in R, so there it, we, we don't know that there's explicitly uh, geometry associated with it. So the first thing we're gonna do is take this shootings and we're gonna actually convert it into an SF object by using the function st as sf. And there's this argument here called chords, which tells us which columns contain the coordinates. So in this case, it's the uh, longitude, and the latitude, um, it, it's backwards. So I also know that since it's in, in a um, decimal here that we uh, need to specify the CRS and that's gonna be 4326. It's just the most common thing that you're gonna find. Um, this isn't the right projection, but it's good enough for now and to get the point across. So here we can see it has a geodetic CRS, WGS84. And let's save this into an object called Shooting SF. So now we have this shooting SF object. And if we visualize it by extracting the geometry and passing that to the plot function, we see it's just a bunch of points. And what we want to do is we want to overlay a grid over this and then count how many points are inside that grid. And the way we do that is by using this function st make grid. It comes from the package SF. And if we pass in a SF object, it'll create a grid over it by default. So let's see what that looks like for now. Okay, so that, that's just a square grid over um, our points. There's a lot of people who actually prefer hexagons for a lot of reasons. One reason is because every neighbors are equidistant. And we can actually do that. We can, we, we can create this grid to be a hexagon grid by setting a couple arguments here. So if we look at the documentation, st make grid, we see that square equals true. So if we set square equals false, hexagons, there's another argument in here called flat topped. And if we set that to true, we get this more honeycomb like pattern. I like it, it's kind of nice. So this helps us, right? So I'll call this GRD for short for our grid. Uh, this is nice, but we want to have this look somewhat like our underlying data. So what we can do is actually plot our grid, then we'll plot our uh, the geometry of the shooting SF. And I'm gonna make this color equals uh, blue. We'll plot these on top of it. So there's a lot of these hexagons that we don't actually want, right? Because this they don't intersect with our data at all. So what we really want is this shape that kind of follows along what we got here, right? And that's what the fishnet's gonna look like. So how do we get rid of those things? We need to figure out which hexagons intersect with our points. So we'll do st intersects. And the first argument is the GRD because we're interested in what intersects with the grid. Then we'll provide uh, our shooting SF object. And 
here, we see that we have this first element is empty, second, so on and so forth. Now, if we look at our grid, we have 136 features, and we know that this is a sparse geometry predicate list of length 136. What that really means is for each element of this list, if there are any intersecting neighbor or intersecting points, it'll tell us the row ID of those points in this table. So for, we can see, for example, this number eight, it has an intersecting point uh, for the 249th observation of this SF object here. The other ones don't have anything that inter intersects. So it's gonna be these ones over here. We wanna get rid of those. And um, this doesn't look like some, some uh, object that we know how to work with, but I wanna show you a cool trick I like using a lot. If we pass it into unclass, it removes any special, it removes any special um, classes that might be assigned to it. And we can see what the underlying object looks like. And here it's just a list. And each element here is an integer vector that has those indices. So what we can do actually is we can pass this to my secret favorite less known function called lengths. What this does is for a list, it tells us how long each subsequent element in that list is. So we can see there's a lot of these that have zeros. We don't want any of those locations that have zero. We only want the ones that have one or more intersecting points. So we can um, pass that, uh, what, what we can do is we can store this an object and then figure out which ones, which elements have greater than zero uh, intersecting points and we can subset our grid to that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this up a little bit by finding lengths. Okay, and then I'm gonna actually turn this into a logical statement where I say which ones are greater than zero. I'm gonna wrap this even more into a which statement, which gives us the row indices for when these are true, right? So this is the first element is eight. That means the first time we see true is the eighth element into this uh, logical vector. So I'm gonna call this index. And now I'm gonna subset our grid by that index and I'm gonna plot it. Now that looks a lot better. So I'm gonna just put this below and I'll call this green for the sake of this time. And we can see that this actually looks more like what we'd expect, right? We only receive those hexagons that have overlapping or intersecting points. Super, super, super cool. But now the next step is to count how many points fall in there. So um, what we'll do now is, uh, we'll call this um, Fnet, and we'll have that subset index. So if we look at this, it's an SFC polygon SFC class. So it doesn't have any other columns or, or attributes associated with it. The way we can um, have those things is by turning it into a SF object. So what we can do is we can pass Fnet into ST as SF. And we can see this is now a simple features collection, 65 features and zero fields. So what I love doing is creating a ID column based on the row number. And um, that's lovely, but I'm actually gonna take a couple steps back, delete this and pass it into STSF and kind of include all these into one step. So now if I see a Fnet, we have this one column. So what we can do here is join these together by, uh, using a spatial join. So I always kind of forget what the order is supposed to be here, whether it's, I don't know, which one's on the left or right. So I'm just gonna figure it out as I go. And I'll take um, shooting SF and Fnet. That looks great, because we have 266 observations in our shootings, um, shape, our shootings SF object. And now our result from the join is 266. But now we have uh, the ID column from that fishnet object associated with it. So what we can do now is actually drop that geometry. I, I don't need it anymore at this point. What I wanna do is, oopsies, count the number of times each ID appears. We do that by doing count ID. 
So we'll call this um, shooting count. And if we wanted, we could just look at shooting counts as a histogram. And see what it looks like, mostly zero or, or probably one actually. And this is cool, but we want it to be a map. So what we'll do is we will um, join that shooting counts onto our um, fishnet. So fnet shooting counts. And um, that's great. Let's call this fnet counts. And now we can begin to visualize it. fnet counts. Uh, ggplot, we want to find, we want to fill our, our polygons based on the n. So fill equals n. We want to add a sf layer. It's going to look bad. I, the gray always kills me. So what I do every time, say color equals black. LWD for line width equals 0 0.15. And then we can do a theme. W. That's looking better. But let's actually add some even fancier stuff. Let's do scale fill zero dis C for continuous. And we do option equals C. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. And then we can add a title. Title equals shooting in the Bronx. I think that's where it was. There we go. That's that's lovely. So one other thing I want to do is go over writing a helper function to create that fish net. And um, what we want to do essentially, if we're thinking about writing helper functions, we find out in our code that we wrote what is going to change and what's not going to change. So in our case. What's going to change is this input geometry. So let's make a function called make fish net. Fish net. It's a function. It takes one argument for now. This is a geometry. And then we're going to these things here, paste it inside. Oh. The grid all the way to the index that up inside of here. We don't need any plotting inside of a function. It's not our objective. We're going to change our input to match the argument name geometry and see what happens. So our function takes the geometry, it passes the geometry into stMakeGrid, and it finds the index and returns the subset of our grid. So make fishnet uh, shooting SF. Great, it worked. Plot it. Great, looks great. Well, what if we actually wanted a square grid? It, inside of our function definition, we actually specify hard-coded that square equals false and flat top equal true. So there's a trick I like to do uh, when I'm feeling a little lazy. It's to use dots. So here we can add the dots. And we can put them inside of our estimate grid as well. What this means is we can pass in any named argument, and that will be passed directly into wherever dots is. So we can provide using dots here, since they're being passed into estimate grid, any argument from estimate grid besides x right here, because we're providing the argument x by position, but everything else we can specify here. So let's say, um, actually, let's just leave it as is. So now by default, it uses a grid. And if we wanted it to be, or squares, if we wanted to use hex, we'd say square equals false, so on and so forth. So that's a super, super handy dandy function that you might like.